Hey. Can we ask Luis a question? You can ask Luis a question, Stevie. Yes, welcome to Extra Time. Before we get to your questions, uh, Stevie has a question for Luis. How often do you get your hair cut? Wow, OK. Oh, it's got to be once a week, isn't it? <laughs> well, because it's, it never changes. Is that, is well, that a question for me? <laughs> You're just looking a bit weird Well, that's today. why I was thinking, because I'm getting mine cut tomorrow, but well, I'm like, I'm like every four some... weeks. Yeah, but this is never changes. Oh, well, that's, let's find out, Luis. Fantastic, fantastic question. I had it today and I have it every week. Once a week. Every week? Yeah, I, thought so. yeah, I would have said three weeks. Once a week, would you? I need a haircut, but I normally try three weeks. Okay. Month. But yeah. even if I've not had the haircut, I try and put some product. Yeah, what's happened today, Stevie? It seems extra fluffy. I've got new product in it. You've got something in that? Aye, ah, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> Don't worry, but well, normal service will be hold on, hold on. resumed yeah. tomorrow. Yes. So what product is it? I don't mean the exact name. Is it? It's. Did it's, you go? It looks it's like wax or gel. Is it a hairspray? <laughs> you sprayed it. You missed it. It's, it's a different gel. gel. <laughs> it's a stronger gel. Okay, which doesn't. But it just didn't work. No. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have any experience. What, what, that was a British, That's a difference. What provoked you to try a different gel? Oh, because I ran out of the other stuff. Oh, okay. So just stuff that's lying around. I think it's in the cupboard. <laughs> Listen, I think it's a winner. Oh, man. Frank, what would happen if you didn't shave your head? Would you have the halo? Shut up, ask your question, you know. Don't, 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 don't ask a question like that. Don't leave me alone. Yeah, that's a yes. You know? No, yes, uh, yes, I have nothing. I have nothing anymore. Oh, oh, oh Dan, can I say something? Of um, course. I texted because I had many times listening to Craig and, uh, and, uh, and Stevie talking, and I texted uh, Willie Saniel, uh, the coach of Georgia, who qualified, uh, who qualified Georgia. It's a real miracle. and. Uh, because maybe you didn't know, but the coach of Georgia is a French guy, Willy Sagnol, who played for Bayern Munich. Fantastic yeah. right back and fantastic coach now. Sagnol, yeah. Yeah, well, there we go. Thank you very much. Oh, well, oh, lovely. Lovely. Did, did he reply to your text, Frank? No, he's blocked him. Oh, of no course, he said, thank you, Frankie. You are adorable. He said, you no. are adorable. Oh, wow, see? OK. OK. <laughs> Craig, has the scrapping of the away goal rule in European competition skewed the balance of win probability in favour of the second leg home side since they have the ability to strategise for the return leg from the off, banking on the home advantage in the deciding match and extra time and penalties? Holy smokes. <laughs> what a way to kick things off. Yeah, what, what a question. Can, can you repeat that? No, uh, I'm only joking. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't think. I don't. Uh, Frank, I love that. Thank you. I. Uh, I've not really paid much attention to it, to be quite honest with you. I. I don't have an issue with. No, this it was round. disappointing this round because of the, the draw, wasn't it? I think you looked at that draw because people said, oh, you know. I don't think when the away goal rule was in that we really saw a lot of teams going away from home and going for it. Yeah. I, I don't think so. I mean. Yeah. Stevie, do you have an opinion? I would prefer the away goals, to be honest. Yeah, but it's the way that's the way you are, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. For Frank and, uh, and Luis, who will go further in the Euros this summer, Luis? France or Spain? Uh, if it's me, the first one, and the way that I've seen things, honestly, I would love to say different, but I see stronger France, so I would say France will go uh, further. Yeah. Yeah, Frank. Well, I would love to agree with uh, with Luis, but uh, you know we're sure about nothing right now. I mean, the two favourites are struggling right now: England and then France, and they're like twin brothers, you know, having poor performances. And and if the result for France tonight was better than England, I mean, the performance was really average. So we don't know where we go. And uh, as Craig mentioned during the the, the show, if Morata um, wakes well, go back to his best like he's been doing for, for Atletico Madrid. You know, you can have a different scenario. So we don't know where where we are right now. It's two months before, three months before the competition. We don't know where we are. And uh, having prediction right now is, is too dangerous. And that great win that Atleti had over Inter at, at the Metropolitano, uh, he was terrible, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. He just looks as yeah. if he's... He's, he's got to find a way to, to, to energise himself for the finish, for the run into the season with the Euros in mind because he was up to all his old tricks. You know, he was falling over, he was getting cut offside, right. his, his link-up play was poor, his touch was poor, all the, all the things that when he's off sort of are so noticeable. 
But yet when he's on his game, and you know we've seen him this this year in Spain in La Liga, when Atleti have got really good servers into the box, into the box, him attacking it and linking up with Griezmann for the most part has been has been excellent. But his form is coming at a bad time for both club and country. But he's got, he's, I suppose he's got time to turn that around. Stevie, do you feel like players before the 90s are forgotten? Anytime there's greatest of all time list, only people mention Pele and Maradona, nobody else. Yeah, 100%. But I think, I think a lot of that is to yeah. do with the way the game's been sold since then, though. Right. You know, as much as it was, it was probably the most watched game on the planet previous to the 90s, it's even more mm. now. So I would suggest that more people watch it, and that's why before the 90s, the majority of those people that, that have now come on board wouldn't know most of the players anyway. So I think that's the biggest reason. Uh, can, uh, can, I say, can I say that I a bit disagree, you know, in a way that we all remember Johan Cruyff, Socrates, Platini, Keegan, Dalglish, uh, um, Moore, uh, so many others. I mean, this might be my time, but when I talk to play, you know, young players, they know Cruyff, they know Beckenbauer, they know Platini, they know... Uh, um, uh, Charlton, they know um, um, uh, Moore, they know those players, they know the names. The names are uh, sacred. They don't really know them because they didn't see them playing because they don't have many pictures of them, of, of matches of them, but they, they are known as legends, for sure, yeah, and but forever. The, but the problem is, Frankie, as much as I agree with you there, the problem today is they know who three or four of the other guys were. Right. So that's, that's the difference between pre-90s and post-90s, that you're, you're flinging out one name from teams. Everybody knows three and four from teams. Yeah, true. When you, when, I don't think people that watch the game now, you know, obviously of a certain age, it's more difficult for them to look back, but they don't realise. Well, let's just take the one, one sort of decade, the 80s. I don't think, they, certainly in England, but also in France and Spain and Germany and Italy, and all these. Do you remember Italy was the place to go? In fact, really? everybody. Yeah. Nobody had. Yeah. There was some went yeah. to Spain. Ian Rush went there. Welcome. One of that. One or oh, two Bill. went to Germany. They all went to Italy. But I don't think. If you take England for example, the Liverpool team in the 80s. You need to take another team that people just wouldn't even think about. Is our old former uh, uh, colleague Paul Mariner, the mm -hmm. late Paul Mariner, Ipswich Town. You don't. People don't realise actually all those players, Mariner. Brazil, Butcher, Murin, Tyson, Mick Mills was the England captain yep. playing for Ipswich. Yeah. You know, Bobby Robson, man, they just don't, people just, ah, yeah, it was, the, you know, Man City now and Liverpool now and Arsenal and Barcelona and all these teams. They don't actually, you don't realise how good these teams were playing on some of the worst playing pitches and playing the football they were playing. It just it is kind of, it's the, it's the sort of move on era because it's all on TV, yes. it's on social media. Yeah. But over the years, there's been some incredible you, you teams. You just reminded me, I was laughing when I was driving in the other day. Oh, well, did you see yourself in the I mirror? I was listening to Tommy Smith and Rodney Marsh on, on the radio, right? Right, OK. And they were talking about how Saka has been complaining about getting kicked so much. Right. I, I nearly crashed the car. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not, you can't kick anybody these days. He thinks getting kicked now is a problem. Well, I think he wanted to play in the 80s. Not, that's not, that's not <laughs> Let me tell you. Yeah, right, OK. <laughs> uh, what's the reaction of the manager, Luis, if you get injured during an international break friendly? I don't understand why some play like each game is the World Cup. Yeah, but as, a, as a manager, the, the, you're not happy, not happy at all. And now they've, they've been trying to build this new new competition to try to give it more importance to all the international uh, uh, games or friendly games, uh, having a cup at the end, so you make it more intense. That sometimes for the player, it doesn't matter because when you are with the national team, I, I, I don't know the guys, but I'm sure that they were trying to do their best and you put everything that you got uh, to try to, to play well and to give it to, for, to your national team. So in the end, if you get injury, the worst part is for, to be honest, the clubs and the manager who needs to continue building the team uh, ahead of what happened in, in the nation, in the national, uh, um, in the national stop. So I think there is a is a mess. And right now, at least, we we can enjoy this competition because back then, with those friendlies, and uh, there was nothing to gain about it. Okay, I like this question. 
Oh, right. What three additional Chelsea players would Craig and Frank ask to join them in a five aside against Lewis and Stevie's three choices of Liverpool players to make it five versus five? Who would that? So who would? So it's you well, and Frank. Okay, so I've got I've got one straight away. Go on then. Absolutely on. Straight away, Gianfranco. Gianfranco Zola. Zola. Yeah. Uh, yes, baby. Yeah, yes. That he, he's in. Yeah. Frank, are we putting Hazard in as well? No, if I put Zola, I don't put Hazard. I want to win. I know oh, how oh. to win on the five against five. You don't, okay. play, you don't play offensive players. You play defensive. I put oh. Craig in the middle, Gianfranco Zola at front. I play with De Sailly. And you right. pick the goalkeeper, uh, Craig. No, 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 don't have a goalkeeper. It's five out of oh. field. Oh, okay. So we've got Desai, so you pick Leboeuf. the last one, Craig. No. Zola, Burley. Uh, I, I think you've got to have an all-rounder in there. OK. And as much as a, as a manager, I didn't like him. Right. you got to have... you have Hullet in there. you got to have Rud Hullet in there because people are just going to bounce off him. Right. I mean, he can do everything. Yeah. <laughs> Defend, score goals. OK. Upset yeah, Peter Everton. Right. Yeah. So Hazard, Terry, <laughs> oh, no. Lampard. Upset oh, upset people. I love I love the upset people. <laughs> well, what, people don't realise. Frankie, how big was Hullet? He, he was a monster. Uh, he was a big one. Yeah, he was a monster. Really. He was a monster. He was he was he was high, he was wide, <laughs> he was technical, he was fast. I mean, yeah, yeah. At his prime, the guy was untouchable, yeah, for sure. Okay then. Luis and Stevie. Your three others. Well, Luis, I would go. I would go with me, you, Barnes, Gerard, and which centre forward? Oh, oh, you've not you've not gone back an era to Rashi. Is it Rashi? Rashi. Hey, no Rashi. Dog Rashi. Leash. No dog leash. Five aside. Right. Explain why that's different. Well, because Kenny always wants to go towards goal. Right. Five aside. There's a, there's a lot of tactical. Play involved in five or six. Wow. Oh, you're going to be Liverpool yeah. legends. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so he don't He's in the yeah. echo again. Yeah. yeah. So remind me. So we've got Nico, Garcia, Gerard, Gerard, Rush, Barnes, Barnes, and, and Ian Rush. It's very attacking. It's yeah. What yeah, about you've got Barnes you who will do both you sides of the ball. You've got Gerard who'll do both sides. I'll do both sides. We nah. man will fly around the middle, supplying yeah. Rushy. And he'll stick the ball in the back yeah. of the net. Thanks for coming. Who wins yeah. that, Luis? Who wins I that battle? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> they have no chance. They have just no wow. chance. Wow. Wow. Oh my <laughs> god. Oh yeah, sure. Sure, sure. Uh. I have a question for, for Stevie. I'm sorry I never asked because I know he talked a lot about Kenny Dalglish and some others, but he never talked about Kevin Keegan. How high you rank Kevin Kevin Keegan, Stevie? Well, you didn't play He's, with him, did you? No, I didn't play with him, no. No, he he Had he gone to Germany once? He had gone to Germany. Yeah, he went to Germany in the 70s. 77, so I didn't get to Liverpool till 81, yeah. and he'd already gone. But I mean, okay. I think, I think, I think historically we're talking, we're talking Dalglish, Gerard Barnes, then Keegan. No, well, Salah's obviously in that conversation now. Salah's in that conversation now, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, that's a tough one. That's okay. a tough one. Oh, it's, it's okay. Something Thank you. Way home. Yeah. And you're, by, by the way, you're you're, been, you're slipping down the list by every week. You're slandering Liverpool. Yeah. <laughs> UK newspapers picked up on Stevie saying he'd sell Trent Alexander-Arnold, and it's gone everywhere. And He's Liverpool fans are angry. You're very angry. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, no surprise. I actually didn't oh. say that. Oh. Which well, is not unusual. Something you didn't see is actually in the papers. Dan, it? if you're the head coach of ESPN FC and you made it to the final of the Champions League, you get a late penalty to win the game. Which pundit would you pick to take the penalty? Oh, this is tough because... I know, the, I know. I know. It's it because of the repercussions. <laughs> like, it, obviously, it's Frank. I, I would say... Look at me. Look yeah, at I would, me. I would say Frank. But what? the problem is, then, you've just got to hear about it every day, like the World Cup. That's the issue. <laughs> <laughs> You're just adding, adding to yeah. his to his uh, ego, but yeah. So you'd rather lose the left face. <laughs> no, yeah, no, 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 yeah. Frank. <laughs> and then you'd be a contender, but you would also remind me every day. Remember when I saved you? Remember when I scored that penalty? When we won the Champions League? What? You'd, yes, exactly. You'd, you'd, well, there's not many of us taking three in the game, right? No, no, exactly. Luis took penalties. Did Luis, you? did you take pens as well? I do. I do. I do. I do. Yeah. My but first penalty on on La Liga. 
it was a Panenka. My first penalty in Mexico was a Panenka, and the other five that I took all went in. That's it. Yeah, but the, the problem is, I wouldn't trust you because you might be getting your hair cut. Uh, and, you know, yeah. to bring you on, I don't know if we yeah. can trust you in that sort of stage. <laughs> so that be it. You're in trouble, then. Uh, Frank, what's you the definitely go for Frankie. I think I've seen. I've seen Frankie taking penalties. He'd, he'd love it, wouldn't he? He'd, he'd yeah, like, well, it's, it's, some people like the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Frankie loves the moment. Yeah, he, he, Frankie's well, cool. That's why he's on stage. Frank's yeah. cool. Yeah. He'll, he'll take the penalty. Uh, Louis, I was expecting you to see you in the, the Legends I game. Oh, uh, uh, shut up, Frank. Uh, the uh, <laughs> Liverpool Legends game this weekend. Uh, Sven Goran Eriksson, of course, uh, was there as a special guest. Why weren't you there? That seems to be your sort of the thing. I would have loved, but uh, I wasn't called, to be honest. Oh, uh, no. I said, I, I've, been, I've, been told, yeah, I've been told that they, they needed to make a rotation. They want to bring more players in both. Uh, I wasn't called, so, yep. I was uh, disappointed, to be honest, not to be there because I was one of the first ones to call Sven to be uh, part of the, of the game. But yeah. uh, didn't receive the call. It will be the next time. It's all about oh, sad, that raising really, money it? for a good cause. Yeah. I, I think it was fantastic. No, 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 no that was great. And the, the story, of course, if you don't know, Sven Goran Eriksson, the former England coach, um, has been diagnosed with cancer. Uh, he hasn't been given long to live. And he always wanted to coach Liverpool. Terminal, yeah. And I think the game, I think it might have been carried by, was it Channel 4 that carried it? Or anyway, they did an interview you saw from yes. Steve yes. Bauer. Yeah. And some of the ex-players that played for uh, Sven Goran Eriksson were leaving the message and he was getting kind of emotional. Yeah. It was... I mean, it was a nice moment for him, but it's just sad to... It's, it's hard to put into words, isn't it? No, most definitely. But like anyone who saw when they were singing You'll Never Walk Alone, it's cre incredibly touching. And um, what a moment uh, for him. Uh, uh, where are we going? Uh, what, yeah, where can I find that? I never saw that. But sorry? I saw, I, saw, I saw a bit where guys were... When, with Steve Bauer, when yes. they were calling him up on yeah. the... Yeah. I'm sure it will be on YouTube. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, uh, there was a longer interview where he talked, he talked yeah. about stuff. Luis, what's the number one rule from the current times that you would have liked to have, to like to have in your playing days? Well, the rules haven't changed that much, have they? No, no, really. Um, if I can recall right now, I don't know. There is not many rules that I will have changed. It will have like now. Would you have liked VAR, uh, Luis? To think about it, I'm not. No. <laughs> I wouldn't have uh, enjoyed VAR back then. No, I wouldn't have liked that. Uh, Jersey Dudek would not have liked VAR either, by the way. If you go would, back no, there. No, no, I would, no, no, no. Goodness no. me. I think as a player, you wouldn't have liked VAR. Maybe you would, maybe Steve. I don't I think would. I would have liked it. I like it as a, as, yeah, as a pundit, a broadcaster. Not sure as a player waiting to know all the time whether I'd, I suppose if it's pros and cons, when it goes for you, it's fine and right. against you. But I tell you, talking about rule changes, I don't know about you, but the biggest, no I noticed the biggest effect on a rule change when they stopped the ability to pass it back to the goalkeeper. That must have just and he picked, just and he picked yeah. the ball up, right? Yeah. The first pre-season that we played a pre-season match at Chelsea, when the, the first, that was the first year they made the change. So this was around late July, August. And I remember playing the first pre-season game and you're already breathing. You know, your first match, you're always struggling. Right. Takes time to get your fitness. Oh, my God. I was like, somebody kicked the ball out, for God's sake. Because you used to... The ball used to... The, ball, the ability to go back to the goalkeeper and they picked it up and wasted some time. You know, yeah. you got your breath. Well, that first game, it was going back to the keeper and he's launching it up the field and it, 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 was, it never... It literally was never out of play. I mean, you were in the worst position to do that, though. So by that time, I was, I was playing centre back most of the time. Right. So it really, it really, as far as running around, it oh. didn't affect me because you, you, you're doing everything within a certain amount of space anyway. Right. So as far as that was concerned, it was a lot easier for the guys playing centre back. But in the middle of the park. Oh, it was murder. You that, got, but you got used to it. When you scored the own goal against David James, was that? That was the year the rule. That was the year the rule changed. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Yeah, because you just forgot. No. There so was, had it been? Had it changed when you left them? A, no, there was a whole. They had, they had just changed the rule. Right. I'd, I'd had no sleep pretty much the last two nights because Eleanor was ill. Oh, Eleanor. Ah, it's her fault. <laughs> Plus the rule change and the balls, the balls played over me and behind me. Yeah. David James is in goal, who's 16 foot tall, by the way. Yes. And I'm just getting ready to knock it back to him, and then I realised, but I was too late. <laughs> And ended up lobbing them. 
What's your goal? Uh, what an own goal. Somebody to give you a bit. I, I like this. I like this. I like I like I like hold, <laughs> hold, hold. My head was... Uh, can't you go out and fill me a little bit of A4 paper? With a rule change on it? What's your goal? Just have a look at that a moment. Right. Right. Pass back. Don't pass it back. Uh, Frank, it must have affected you as well, yeah? Yeah, yeah, and I, I clearly remember that that year, and I remember the first uh, friendly game that we had at the beginning of the season, where I remember taking the ball from the floor and put it up on my knee and on my thighs and, and put it with a header to the goalkeeper, gave it to the goalkeeper. And the referee said, no, you cannot do that. I give you a free kick against you. And I say, well, not that rule. I can't give back my, uh, my, my <laughs> the, the ball back to my goalkeeper with a header. He said, yes, you can. But you cannot do it on purpose. So we give you a free kick against you. I said, wow, well, that's a rule. But it's true. I agree. I, even as a centre back, I suffered physically because you had to give the ball back and then you have to go back forward uh, because the goalkeeper was kicking the ball. Because remember, the goalkeeper, they weren't good at the time with their feet. So that was pretty, uh, you had to pay attention to what you were doing and the who you would give the ball back to, that's all. But it was, that was very, very, very interesting. Uh, Luis, this must make you feel very young, all this, uh, this discussion. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> so it was in the 90s they changed that rule? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. Not that long ago. <laughs> Don't do the maths. Uh, 92, <laughs> do 93, I think it's 90. Don't... Uh, 92, 93, uh, yeah. Uh, Luis, what do you think the ceiling for Ansu Fati will be? Should he return to Barca or look to have a permanent move to a Spanish rival to kickstart his career? God, you kind of forgot about Ansu Fati, haven't we? We've done all right with Bournemouth. He's at Brighton. Yes. Hey, Brighton. <laughs> he did well for Bournemouth, though. He did well for Bournemouth as well. He hasn't <laughs> played well all the time for Brighton. Uh, go on, Luis. Yeah, so he's not playing regularly at Brighton, something that is very important for him. I think, my opinion, the way I've seen it, I think he should find a way of uh, uh, to go. I'm not sure if for long, because I'm not sure if Barcelona is gonna uh, um, uh, wanted to sell him uh, right now. But he should be trying to find a way. Bring him back to Barcelona, I think he's gonna face again to a new generation again. Younger players that they are right now in a fantastic moment. We are thinking about uh, Lamin Yamal who just arrived. Uh, Fermin that just arrived, players who are being involved in that kind of position. I'm sure Barcelona is going to try to sign more players. And he needs to play. He needs to feel important. He needs to feel comfortable. He needs to um, earn minutes, win minutes, play minutes. And that's something that he's not getting at the moment. He thought that just going to Brighton, he will have the chance of playing a lot of minutes. But he found that uh, outside of Barcelona, there is a very difficult world. They need to change mm. their mindset and start thinking that if you are right there, you need to continue working even harder to try to prove your, your value. And I think he needs to move, and he needs to move to another place where he can play a lot of minutes. You'd have thought he'd have been, like, undroppable at Brighton. Yeah, I know. But I know they've got some good players, yeah. like Matoma and others, yeah, and solid the injuries match. as well, you think they would... And they've not had the best of seasons. They've been topsy-turvy. Yeah. You, you would have... I mean, it's not quite he as... Kept, he kept driving to Bournemouth. That was the first It's not thing. far. Aye. You can always go down there and try well, his luck. play for Brian. Yeah. <laughs> uh, final question, Frank. Which from the below will happen first? So what will happen first? England winning the Euros or the World Cup? Arsenal winning the Champions League? Or Spurs winning the Premier League? Wow. No, I've uh, got the answer, Frank. It's an easy one. Yeah, Come on. It's really easy. It's easy, Frank. Come on. Come on. Uh, oh, my God. Okay, okay, I go for England winning the Euro. Yeah, it's the correct World answer. Cup, yeah. Whatever it yes. is. Uh, Arsenal winning the USL. UCL, no, sorry. Arsenal never and then the after Spurs winning US. the Premier League. I think yeah. it, I thought the answer was Arsenal winning the Champions League. Really? Yeah. No. No, it's not. Oh, you have a lot of confidence in England? Oh. You'll be in punter mode, banging <laughs> yeah, the desk I will be banging the desk. Oh, oh, it's, 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 it's coming home. <laughs> it's coming home. Uh, Oh, Frank, you're going to be here, aren't you, for the Euros? What else? Is, have you booked the nice hotel? Don oh. isn't allowed in it. Uh, well, I don't know yet. I didn't book the hotel yet, but I'm going to be there and I'm yeah. going to enjoy it. Oh, good. You I'm pleased. I'm great. <laughs> uh, that is it. Uh, we are done. We will be back tomorrow uh, for more as we kind of turn the page on international football. No, but looking oh. back. No, looking back. Yeah, looking back. Only looking forward. Looking no. back the whole Only week. Looking forward yes. now. Uh, of course, some big games this weekend, including the Classica and Arsenal Man City.